It's so good to have you with me today on Paint a Beautiful Picture. This is episode number 201, and it is called, It is Not My Fault! Oh, I cannot tell you how many times I have heard those words in my life. They were very common words in my childhood. Uh, it was very challenging in my childhood because there was a lot of blame that went on in my original family. And so there was a lot of defensiveness and a lot of pushback and uh, an unwillingness to take responsibility because of the level of criticism and condemnation that came with actually being responsible for something going wrong. I say all of that to you because it is very challenging for us in general anyways to take responsibility, to go to someone and say, I broke this. I didn't mean it, but I did, or I borrowed this from you and I ruined it and that was on me because I wasn't as careful as I might have been. We just really have a hard time taking responsibility. I don't mean little kids. I'm talking adults. It's not something that many of us have been taught a lot about and we are very challenged with this. So the language of it's not my fault is probably prevalent in many of our worlds. It certainly is when you have children, especially if you're dealing with a group of children, two or three or more. So if you have a larger family, I'm pretty sure you've probably heard these words before. And quite truthfully, uh, if you're a teacher or you work in any kind of a situation where you are responsible for a number of children, you've heard these words. Because you know what? Children tend to be rambunctious when they're playing in a group. There are kids who are extremely cautious or shy or afraid. Those timid ones aren't the ones who do it sometimes, but they might be the ones to get blamed. But there are certainly regular, normal, average kids who get playful and get careless and things get broken, and things happen, things get lost. And it is a big thing for them to establish the principle in their life that it is really okay that things go wrong, but you need to take responsibility for all of the things you do. According to Webster, a fault is something that is at risk or something that is uh, a, an, an injury or a character flaw or a difficulty, or when you're talking about a fault line, it is literally a split into the earth. It is a defect. And I guess we all know that. So that's why we use the language, it is not my fault. Blame is something that lots of people do. Little kids do it constantly. You did it. You did it. No, you did it. He did it. I saw him. He did it. He did that, mom. I know he did it. Oh, wowza. And so helping a young person to say, I did it, is a very big deal. And the sooner you start, the better. So when my kids were little and they would spill something or they would drop something, I would say to them, so who did this? And of course, there were regular kids. Oh, David did it. Oh, Marcus did it. I didn't do it, Mom. I promise. It wasn't me. I never did. Uh, and of course, I told you when I was younger, I pretty much had a terrible bad temper. So they would sometimes get yelled at and they didn't like it and they didn't want to. So they'd play this. But I told them, I said, whoever did do it, they need to admit it. Because when you have enough character and enough strength to say, I did it, you will not get in trouble. That was my hard and fast rule. I wanted them to learn to take ownership over what they did, both good and bad. And I wanted them to be free to tell me the truth. So as soon as you told me the truth about something, that was it. All other forms of discipline disappeared because that's how much I appreciated and admired having the truth told to me. So you have a child and they can't ever admit they do anything. And land sakes, if you have an only child, you pretty much know who it is, right? But even if you have two or three, you kind of know the more mischievous one, the one that's most likely that you're going to look at first when things get broken or destroyed. And so you say, okay, so who did this? Sometimes one of the easier ways to go about this, and it took me a while before I knew this language, is how did this happen? And every person gets to speak. No one gets to interrupt. And in talking, you do not get to say, well, he said this, but that's not the truth. We're going to go back to this whole perspective story again and again and again because it is so crucial. 
I don't need you to hear, to hear you tell me all about what he said that was wrong. I need you to tell me your version of the story. That's what I need to hear. That's what we're going to stick to. When they do this, it builds so many things in their characters. So since a fault is a character flaw or a problem, now you're building good positive character traits within your child. So you say, I need you to tell it to me from where you stand. Don't refute everything your brother or your sister said. Tell me what you saw. Tell me what you believe happened. Police do it all the time when there's a car accident. They talk to three or four people from different vantage points and they get a fuller, more accurate picture of what really occurred. So we need to be that smart, at least as a parent. Listen to everyone tell their side of what happened. You're, you're hearing two or three different stories. Doesn't mean anyone's lying. Just means you're, well, I'm not telling you they're not, because maybe they are, bolstering their position. But still, really listen to what they're saying. You're liable to get a better picture of the story. All right. And you let them know. If, in fact, you did it and nobody had anything to do with it, then you just say, I did this, Mom. The end. Okay, good. Now we know what happened. If it was something you weren't even supposed to play with or something you weren't even supposed to touch, then we'll deal with that part of it. But just who did this? How did this happen? What was going on? All right, if two kids are playing tug of war and they're fighting over something and they tear it apart or they break it or they manage to have something explode and blow it up all over the whole entire dining room or God help us all, all over the living room. So there's crud all over the furniture and the upholstery and the carpeting and, you know, kids, the things they can do. Say, okay, well, so this is what happened. And now here are the consequences. And oh my goodness, we have to get this all cleaned up. All right, so you have a kid who loves to paint and he gets a hold of a set of markers and he paints all the way down the entire hallway wall. So you get some paint, a $20 gallon of paint. And well, now it's more like 37. But anyway, so you buy this gallon of paint. You tell your kid, uh, two bucks is coming out of your $5 allowance for the next 10 or 20 weeks because you're paying for this. You did this. You're paying for this. You knew better. You're eight years old. You chose to paint all down the wall. Yeah, you're paying for this. And they can help paint the wall. But oh my goodness, it's bleeding through. It takes you more cones of paint than you even knew existed. And now you got to get the whole thing cleaned, take off that paint, steam it off, and get it clean to boot because it just isn't going to come off. Or heaven forbid, you have to put up an entire brand new piece of drywall. You can literally say to your child, this is your responsibility. And you don't have enough money to pay 580 bucks to the guy who had to come and take down this particular piece of wall and put up a whole new piece. I get that. But you know, I had to pay for this. And so really and truly, you remember that we were going to go to Six Flags or we were going to go to this place and have a special day together. We can't do that anymore. And that responsibility rests with you. It really does, because this is what you did and this is what it cost. This is what it took to take care of it. We can't do everything. So this is the cost to our entire family of your actions. You can't be afraid to let a child understand that their actions have a cost. Sometimes it really just is monetary. Sometimes there is a bigger cost, a different kind of emotional or psychological cost. All of that is part of learning to be a responsible human being, a person of character who takes responsibility for the decisions that were made and the consequences thereof even if they were unexpected, even if they couldn't have ever anticipated what was coming next after they did X, that Y and Z and O, double A and double B were going to follow. But you do need to help them get this message into their brain and into their heart that when you do certain things, even if it wasn't well thought out or you didn't think it through, and then there are consequences, you pay for those consequences. And sometimes even all of those around you pay for those consequences. It's true. We'll put this in real human terms. So a fault which goes through the earth and causes an earthquake and houses are destroyed. Cars are destroyed. Sometimes people died. It was that fault that created all this consequent trouble. 
and you need to tell your children. I'm not looking at you and saying it's your fault. What I'm helping you to understand is you are responsible for your decisions, and ultimately, because of those very decisions, you're responsible for the fallout, for the bigger picture, the ripples in the pond, that though you did not expect and that wasn't what you meant to happen, that is exactly what happened. I had a neighbor, and his name was Patrick. He just would run across the street. We lived on the, one of the major, major roads in our town. The speed limit was 25, but people would sometimes drive 40 or 45 down that patch of our street. And I told him, I said, Patrick, I know your dad's been telling you because I've heard him for years. Stop, look, and listen before you run across the road, any road. And just running across Prairie Avenue like a maniac is really dangerous. One of these days, someone's probably going to hit you, Patrick. So I'm sitting in my living room this day. And I hear this massive screech and a big thud. And about three, four seconds later, this horrible thump. So I hear the person try to miss him. I hear the thud when they hit him and the thump when he finally landed after he goes flying, flying, flying through the air. He had a horribly broken leg. They weren't really sure how that leg was going to do. He ended up in a cast for about six months. And thankfully, he could walk and run normally after he got the cast off. So he was really a blessed kid. And he didn't end up landing on his head with brain damage or anything. But he... He was fully responsible for his own behavior. He had already been warned. He made the decision, goes trucking across the street like he did a hundred other times before when nothing happened. And he had to bear the consequences. But so did his family. So did his dad, his mom, his sister. He wasn't the only one. So did people in his school who had to help him carry his books. Other people in parts of his school where he couldn't participate in certain activities that he had before. There was massive fallout in a big, big way over him making one decision to do whatever he felt like doing that he had done a lot of other times before without negative consequences that all of us could see coming. But when it did happen, he alone was responsible for the decision that he made, but everybody else had to live with the results. You need to help your child understand when you are responsible, you take responsibility for your actions. First of all, by admitting what you did or sometimes did not do, and then acknowledging there are consequences for that, and then recognizing that people around you are also going to bear parts of the consequences of your decision. A child needs to get this because when a child grows up to be a dad or a mom or a supervisor or a manager or an executive of some kind, or a school teacher, or a principal, or a physician, or a nurse, and they have responsibility in other people's lives, if they haven't learned to be responsible, and they haven't learned the possibility of consequences and what that looks like in other people's lives, they will live carelessly. I can just do whatever I want. That is not a very workable way to run a healthy, strong life. So your goal is to help your child understand the principle that, oh, sometimes it is your fault. It is your responsibility. Sometimes you actually are the very person that is going to be held completely responsible for this particular incident. They really need to get that. And they need to learn to take on that responsibility and acknowledge that responsibility and see it for what it is. This is not a negative. Trust me. This is a huge positive for a young person to learn to take responsibility for themselves, for their actions, for their thoughts, for their ideas, and even for the impact that they have in the lives of other people around them that care about them. I hope this has been really helpful to you. I'm so glad you were able to join me today on Paint a Beautiful Picture. I will look forward to spending time with you again soon. You may find additional information on our paintabeautifulpicture.com website. Additionally, you may watch me on Rumble, and you may also listen to a podcast on Buzzsprout or Spreaker, all under the name Paint a Beautiful Picture. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. 
You may subscribe, and if you are interested in receiving notifications, please hit the notifications button.